Kapla! What is the Empire? And welcome back to another episode of Starfleet Command Orion Pirates Plus Mod. This is Future T-Rex speaking once again. Hello, how you doing? Don't you love time travel plots? Anyway, once again, past T-Rex not watching the clock so carefully. Well, actually, no, he was watching the clock. Unfortunately, he got involved in another one of these amazingly, epically, well, sometimes boring, but pretty cool, actually, this time. Uh, Starbase, or not Starbase, but uh, Shipyard Assaults. So uh, we've had to split the episode up again. Past Tarek didn't realize it's a future Tarek here coming in to say Kapla and how y'all doing. I'm going to send you back to over to that guy right now and we're going to see this awesome shipyard assault and really just sort of emphasize how cool the D5 cruiser really is starting to become. So, I will see you all pretty soon. It's going to be Hydrant Shipyards, which are not particularly dangerous unless they have Hellbores, but I think they'll just have... We are supported by LDD. The Pestilence. Fighting a light cruiser, a COS. It'll be some kind of carrier, but this is a DDF, which I'm gonna. K I want to say it's a battle frigate, but it doesn't have B in the name. DD tells me destroyer. F might be something, some variant on their destroyer. So hey, maybe that's it. Uh, probe will be available very shortly. Probe off, witchy. And I'll check, we are heading into the upper right-hand corner of the map. I don't think that'll be a problem, but just in case. He's a definitely a carrier type, and he's got really nasty frontal shields. So, disruptors selected. Out of range, steadily coming into range. And we can fire. Turn. His fighters have been deployed. And we picked the wrong direction to turn. We should have turned to port. We should have gone to the DDF. The DDF is... Oh, it's a... It's a, a pseudo-fighter carrier. Okay, that's different. And something I didn't think of because we didn't have them last mission. And also because I forget a lot. Uh, I didn't build any... Scatter packs, which will be important. So we're going to try and play sort of on the edges of this. And... More power. I need more power, I need to keep away from him. We're gonna play the game's the greatest game of keep away you ever done see. Mines. You wanna come after me? Come through the mine. I do need to get around though to this. Okay, the fighters have split up. This gives me an opportunity. A couple of missiles his way. He's had to spend some of his heart. Okay, we got one fighter group. We're gonna sprint for the uh, DDF, the pestilence over here. He's right on our tail, so we're gonna Dump another mine right at him. If he wants to keep coming, he's going to have to run into that. Another fighter group. We've lost some of our shields. Come on. Any weapon? We got that fighter group. Okay, two of his fighter groups are down. We've taken some serious damage here. So, we don't have a uh, port turn available to us anymore. Because if we do, we're in trouble. I do want to swoop around and finish off that. You, I'm going to risk it. Let's see what he does with it. And you. Missiles. He picked it off. Right, well, I'm going to hope that's going to be beyond your ability to stop. They're actually flying slower than you. Crap. Those missiles aren't going to make it to him in time. He's going to get away. I was really hoping to kill him before he could get there. Oh, come on. PFs, kill it. Or at least force him to slow down so he runs into my missiles. Fighters can't take damage like that. They just bits and pieces of the fighter fall off. But uh, they don't take systems damage like a major starship does. Yes, we got it. Okay. So, Edge Coast no longer has any support. He's down to just a phaser boat, which admittedly, he's a pretty dangerous phaser boat. Gonna put in some missiles his way. And keep firing on the long side. We actually were able to maintain maximum speed in this thing? I didn't think we could. Oh, because we're not... Are we not certain disruptors? What? Did something get thrown out about power balance? Okay, so we've managed to take out his his advantage. He's basically on par with a light cruiser now. Or maybe even a destroyer. It is just a whole bunch of phasers, but phasers can be scary. And we have PFs with us, and these are... 
interceptor PFs, which are armed with a single disruptor, and two phaser twos and two phaser threes. Not the scariest thing ever, but you know, it's something. Any amount of firepower is some firepower that can be used. We're gonna see if we can't pour fire into that shield. Come on, other disruptor, come on, line. Mm, can I get hits out of that? There we go. So we're pouring fire into his flank shields. He's already lost, lost his starboard flank shield, which is forcing him to keep on this turn. If he loses his port one, he's going to have to start making some decisions about coming in close. All weapons. Nothing that can really touch him. I am kind of content to letting him run at long range. Uh, it allows our shields to come back online. Uh, and, yeah, pretty much just that. We don't have any engine damage. Our systems are in pretty good shape. So... Don't you sit! Ah, oh, you son of a! Everything we got, Adam. We got to disengage on the side. I don't want to disengage on. So he's now being chased by three missiles, and those ones just ran out of fuel. I really, really hate it when your allies dump mines right in your face. Cause it's like, what were you thinking? So he got hit by the battering ram, the uh, expanding sphere generator, the greatest space-borne battering ram. Crap. Uh, I cannot disengage to the port. If I do, he'll he'll maul. Me. So I am going to accept a close-in phaser pass in order to avoid exposing these extremely weak shields. I want them back as soon as possible. A couple more missiles heading his way. He's not doing fast enough to take them out, and he just fired his phaser Gs. They might not be... Uh, no, they'll be available in time. Because these missiles are doing net like eight on him, so... A little bit better than that, but they can't close the distance before the phaser G's ready again. Disruptors! Ooh, that was some nice hit hits right there. I want to keep turning to port to curl in on a boat. I can't, because if I do, weakness and not greatness. Uh, one of the things about this Klingon campaign is it's telling you positioning is everything, because if you don't play the positioning game right, that's what happens to you. And we didn't play the positioning game properly, and we lost a D7 battlecruiser. We lost two D7 battlecruisers. So, sticking us back into this little thing where we run away at high speed and try and avoid offending anybody. There's our star docks. Tell me, what does the traditional star dock of the Hydran Kingdom look like? Heading towards him. We're going to keep it at somewhat low speed here. And the traditional star rock of the Hydran Kingdom appears to be yeah, a little bit more, a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so Gatling phasers and a phaser two. <laughs> the reason why I'm chuckling is because Gatling phasers don't particularly have great range. So as long as we stay outside of our range of five, we'll be golden. I love this. This is wonderful. Now we can't use missiles on it, we'll never hit, but we can orbit with disruptors. And that's exactly what I intend to do. So we will select disruptors, because disruptors are wonderful weapons. And by wonderful I mean incredibly underpowered, but sort of accurate and firing pretty often. We'll close to a range of about six and we'll keep orbiting and orbiting and orbiting. And if we do that, we should be able to... Should be able to kill him. Now he is turning the dock towards us to try and keep his best weapon arcs available. And we will slow down in time. And reduce speed to a standard orbital speed of 10. And as you can see, we are buffing the starboard shields. All that additional energy goes into the starboard shields. And apparently we may need to also buff the port shields, but at that range I'm not convinced he's dealing a whole ton of damage. So, what happens if I tell you to orbit? No, you'll try and get too close. Let the missiles come in. The Gatling phasers will of course shoot them down. I have zero doubt of that. Yeah. These guys are meandering their way in. I am steadily starting to think that it's a problem with the AI. That the AI does not understand how to kill these things. And so they sort of waddle their way into the fight. 
I am keeping it somewhat on low speed because I'm worried about getting too close because those Gatling phasers, that's 12 phaser 3 shots, that'll rip me apart. I, I just will not survive that. Okay, next blast we're going to wait for him to split his shield reinforcement. And when he does, we'll unload with everything we've got. And... He should be switching it over right now. Chunked it down a bit. And unfortunately the Gatling Cruiser is going to take up. Oh. Should have had... Should have had it available. Nope. I messed up. If I had anything available, I would have been able to take a, take advantage of that opening. But as it is, I couldn't. So he's reduced his shield over on this side. And I want to get a bit more going. Also, if we get too close, he's able to dump mines on our opposite side, which sucks. Because we're not reinforcing that side. Also, there are pot shots at long range. But I'm not super concerned about that. Two more missiles in on him. Let's see if he picks them off with his Gatling phasers, or... He grabbed him. Okay. So now he's p wasting three points of power to uh, shoot down these missiles. This disruptor should have an angle, doesn't it? Oh, it's uh, forward. We have to let it get a little bit further forward, and... No, there's no point. We're going to wait for the whole Alpha Strike to get here. And this is why these missions can get annoying. Okay, we're gonna risk it just a bit. Wow, it took him a lot of shots to shoot that down. That's her open. And yes, this is what we're trying to do. Three points of power being wasted on that. Seriously, their, their AI setup for dropping mines is just the most retarded thing ever. Or maybe it's the uh, station trying to bomb this fighter. That could be it. There we go, that's one. Turn, 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 turn. Yeah, we're following this guy in a battle because it's safer that way. Oh, that way they'll shoot at him first. Which I'm totally on board with. Firing with our masked fire. You know what it reminds me of? Disruptors, because they fire so many shots and they're... It reminds me of, like, hurricanes from World War II. Hurricane fighters. And the reason it reminds me of that is because hurricanes would have, like, 8, 12, 14, 7.7 millimeter machine guns. Which is not a very big machine gun, and not particularly powerful, but it just had so many of them that it was an effective weapon. That's what disruptors kind of remind me of. They're not a great weapon, but you've got a ton of them. Now, disruptors also have the advantage of, you know, being accurate at long range, so you can't complain too much. Well, I could, but... Okay, keep knocking holes in it, keep pulling away, so that he can't really hurt us. His phaser 2 is out of commission, so he's uh, really limited in sort of what kind of combat he can bring to the table. Did you bomb yourself? I didn't think I was possible. That's a bug. Somebody needs to look into that bug. One, allies bombing friendlies, and two, bombing themselves. Because I really didn't don't think that I saw a... Uh... Uh, this is going to hurt. Oh, wow, the shield's held. I am very much surprised the shield's held. I was expecting that to utterly knife through me and annihilate me. Because we've seen what uh, four Gatling phasers can do. They can wipe out heavy cruisers. Do you mind getting involved in this, man? <sighs> Fine. You know what? I'll speed up, and I'll come at this from another angle. We are on the starboard side, and boosting starboard shields. I need a hole. There we go. We have a hole. Okay, that's our hole. I need to be playing with the hole, not with the 
massively powerful shields. So we will try and keep that angle on. And it's not working because I'm not being particularly efficient with my disruptor fire. So come around. Stay outside of his range for his Gallic phasers. We don't want to die. And swoop around. See, this is why it's the Klingon Saber Dance, people. This is exactly the reason why. Because it's all about swooping in, causing damage, going away. So, build some distance, curl on in again, and again, and again, and this is how you have to do it. And he's putting his shields towards me again, but I can outrun his turn. And... More fire. Not doing a particularly huge amount of damage, just a little bit at a time, but it's enough. It's enough that eventually it will kill him. Oh, uh, and he's hurting. And we swoop in again. And a little bit closer than I want to be. Oh, disruptors hit on the wrong side there. He doesn't have much left. He's down to two Gatling phasers, and I don't know what his arcs on his Gatling phasers are, so that's one of the reasons why I'm playing so sort of gun shy here. Because I would rather this take a little bit while longer than to get murdered. So, charging disruptors. He's hurting. He's really hurting. He's down to, uh... To four Phaser 2s and two Disruptors. No ESG, no Shuttle Bay, no Tractor Beams, no Rear Point Defense. Yeah, he's in trouble. So, swooping it again. Long Range Disruptor Fire, just because we can. He really only has two Phaser 2s to really take advantage of this. And we're going to uh, curl around to force him to split his concern between us and the Lyran ship. Lyran ship. So, swoop in. Very us-like. Turn away. Wasn't enough to punch through. That's concerning to me. Because if we don't have enough firepower to really punch through, then what are we doing out here? Yeah, we're... We might not be able to do this. Hmm. We need a plan. I'm not sure what plan to use. Shield reinforcement, we're already using it. ECM could help. Not much, but it could. The reason why it wouldn't help that much, it, it would reduce the amount of damage we take during these passes, but uh, wouldn't really increase the amount of damage that we deal. Tractor beam, he doesn't move anyway. Transporters, I don't think I have enough to overcome him. Okay, he's got a hole. Couldn't take advantage of it. How many uh, people do you got? Twelve. So he's bombing us again and again. So hit and run teams. Hmm. Okay, so he finally got involved, so we can get in tight. So with him involved, he's now having to split his attention between us. Uh, we got in nice and close, but it wasn't enough. And I did want to get in close. That was actually intentional, because I wanted to bring the rear phasers into play. It didn't quite work out as well as I had been hoping, though. Okay, but we do have a hole now. That is a proper hole. And uh, he would be mined if uh, he had messed up his mines. And now we're dealing some damage. Taking a little bit of damage on the shields, but doing a great job here. This episode is going to be running a little bit longer than I want it to, but uh, that's acceptable. The D5 proving that it's a great little workhorse. Really, it's, it's almost as good as a as the D7. Better protection, that's for sure. How many missions of a very similar type did we get where we went up against uh, fleet yards and had so much trouble on D7? Now, granted, the Hydran Kingdom's Star Yard is not so 
It's not exactly what I'd call a beacon of power. I mean, the Romulan one had the uh, had plasma torpedoes. Or not Romulan, it was uh, Gorn had plasma torpedoes. So it's not like we were fighting like some kind of super strong base here. It is the weakest of them, in my opinion. But still, taking out heavy cruisers, dealing diplomatic missions. She's proven to be an excellent ship. Almost a shame when we get rid of her for something more useful. Something more used for sort of the long-range missions we want to get done, the planetary assaults. There we go. Shipyards destroyed. Didn't really take any damage. Was able to exploit our speed, our maneuverability, and our very wide disruptor arcs. Systematically wiped out the carrier's defenses, then took out the carrier, then slowly but surely killed him. And we've neutralized the planet. That's pretty nice. Supply. Uh, we are worth 478. So I'm willing to say that if we can find something cheap that's not on this list, <laughs> uh, we can afford something at about 2800. So the first C7 we could afford. Uh, before I look at the C7, we want to do this really quickly because we are getting to the end of an episode. Well, we are at the end of an episode. Okay, so a C7 battle cruiser. 36, 30, 24s. Four disruptor fours, which I'm assuming are much better. Four missile rack Bs, which would be great. Ten phaser ones, three fa two phaser threes, and an AMD. So here's the plan. We buy the super cheap. Buy. Supply. Trade in. Shipyard. C7. Buy. Buy. We have 2,700 prestige. What? What? Oh, crap. Well, I'm going to try and fix things here. I'm going to go back into the autosave file and uh, try and resolve that issue. But anyway, that's been an episode. Uh, D5 definitely proven that it's a pretty great ship. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next episode.